Hey guys! So, in this video we are going to talk about the main programming languages that I have experience of and their main use case, as seen from my perspective. So let's get into it. Well, as you can imagine, this is extremely subjective and extremely tricky to give some type of inclusive I, I, honestly guys, I, there is no one answer here. There is none. All I'm going to try to do is to do my best to relay how I see most commonly some of these languages being used because the subscriber reached out and wondered where, like kind of from my perspective, where a lot of these different languages are used and what's more very commonly associated with a certain type of language. And I thought that was a really good question because it can get tricky to understand, like, because the thing is, guys, what nobody will tell you, like, where... And this is bad. I think this is really bad. You see, people who love a programming language, like so-called enthusiasts, they will not give you an honest opinion. And what I mean by that is that they are very biased and they will tell you that, oh, my programming language can do anything and if you do it this way or that way you can do... Like, they don't want to admit that certain things other programming languages are more strongly associated with or are more suited to do than their own thing. So they will give you these like, ridiculous reasons as to why their programming language is as good as anybody, anyone else's. Because we don't want to admit that some languages are better at things and some are worse at things. Or even if they're equally good, the trend says, says that one thing is more used for one thing than the other. So here I am trying to go, I'm going to try to give you as an objective opinion as I can on this. So just bear with me. Let's start with the obvious ones. All right, Java. What is Java most commonly associated with? Well, apart from Android development, which you may think is the biggest thing, it's actually not. I will argue that Java is most commonly associated with enterprise level application development. And what I mean by enterprise level application development, I mean that Java is the, it's probably the corporate world's favorite programming language. It is used for almost all, like for, you have no idea how many different, like really, really large companies have their web servers hooked up to Java system. You have embedded devices that use Java. It's not the perfect solution all the time for that, but it's, it's used for that as well. Java is the, well, it's the, it, it is the most, it is the world's most popular enterprise language, it, I, I will say. And the only other language that really rivals it for this is C Sharp. C Sharp and the .NET framework is a very close match to, to Java when it comes to at least enterprise development. I don't, I can't really speak for how common C Sharp is for like embedded devices and stuff of that nature. But when we're talking about enterprise level application development, we're talking web pages the size of Facebook. That's the, that's the size we're talking here. Then it can actually, it's very commonly associated with that as well. So these two languages are very, very common in like really corporate level programming. And then you, I would say that, let's talk about say, take Python for example. Python is, uh, I would say the most common use case for Python is for web, web servers having some type of web application and also, of course, machine learning, computer science. It's very commonly associated with com computer science. Ruby is primarily geared towards web development. So it's PHP is primarily web development, like web pages, standard application stuff of that nature. WordPress, for example, is something that is very closely associated with PHP. What else? What else? Kotlin, although it's the new flavor of the month on the Java platform, it is right now all basically only used for, well, primarily used for Android development, but I, I'm starting to see some people actually use it on the server as well. Swift and, like, I don't think we need to really talk about Swift and Objective-C, it's really, really only used for iOS development. I haven't seen anyone really buy into the idea to use it for the for like a web server. And you, what you should know, guys, is that pr most languages that you will work with are geared towards building web applications. Anywho, what else is there? 
say Node.js, for example. Node.js is an interesting one because na primarily Node.js is associated with a small like microservices, and it's also associated with. Well, I would say that Node.js is probably mostly associated with microservices and service orient like service. It's not, I, I would say that I don't see a lot of people making necessarily web pages or so traditional web applications in just Node.js, but it's very, very common that Node is a part of your tool chain. It's actually one of the main reasons why I tell people that if you are, you are a complete beginner, start with Node because it's like the safest bet you can find. Because if you know JavaScript and you know Node.js, odds are that you're going to get some value from that knowledge in any job you get so long, uh, because so there's it's so common that you use javascript in your projects so anywho but for the most part node is mostly associated with apis like api development stuff of that nature and service development it's not really enterprise level and let's define that so a service is a part of a of a larger system an enterprise level application is usually a traditional like monster monolith type of structure or at least a series of really, really big, like really old applications, which have been around for quite a while. So what else do we have to talk about? We can talk about C and C++. Like primarily C and C++ are used for these days for embedded development or high speed, like high speed, anything that requires high speed development or like low level, man, level memory manage, that, that sort of thing. And you can kind of define that how you want. It's, uh, uh, you use it for browser development, you use it for like systems level programming basically. Now, I'm not an expert in this, so it's very tricky to, uh, to, to like kind of determine what's more likely for like what's the most likely use case for you if you start using something like c or c plus plus but what i can tell you for at least here in gothenburg if you're a master c or c plus plus developer you are most likely going to find yourself working for volvo or some of the like the companies here who create like physical devices like hearing aids car parts like st car systems stuff of that nature embedded systems like that sort of thing is what c and c plus plus is primarily used for at least here and of course it's primarily used for, to basically build most of the operating systems and like the the sort of those sort of sorts of things what else do we have to talk about when it comes to mainstream languages hmm I think those are most of the languages that I myself have been working with. Let's talk about maybe Erlang and Elixir. So these are primarily used in, Erlang is primarily used in the telecom business where like Ericsson and so forth. And it's primarily used for a very specific reason and that is that it's geared towards uptime and long running connections, which is perfect for the telecom industry. Elixir, which is funny, but the most people like for the most part the people I see using Elixir are actually not telecom companies, but actually companies such most of the companies that I've talked to who use Elixir are the sort of people it's associated with I you, you're not going to believe it, the gambling industry. And at first I was kind of surprised by that, but then I kind of thought about it and I talked to some people who were working with it and I kind of realized that, yeah, gam the, the gambling industry, like Bet365 and like whatever they're called, like these companies, I mean, people are gambling all the time, like literally all the time, 24 seven. And for such a company that makes its money off of this, like uptime is super important and that's where Elixir really, really shines. Now you can, of course, use Elixir for more than this sort of application development, but that's the thing I see most people, like that's at least from my perspective, what it's most commonly associated with. And of course, web application development, like making web pages and so forth. And what else do we have? that is common. Like what languages uh, do I have left in my little portfolio of languages? So let's take Go, for example. Go is fairly similar. I would say that Go very much has the same sort of precision it's, uh, that 
that Node has with microservices. Their microservices like Go is very closely, in my opinion, associated with a small like a small service. It's not. I I don't see many people build an entire application in Go, but they are very keen on using it to build some type of support service or something like that for their ecosystem, just like what you used to do with Node. But Go has the benefit of, I, I, honestly, I, I think so. I think that Go is kind of stealing some of Node's thunder. Like Node is still being used, but I, I see more and more people going over to Go for that sort of thing. But as I said, I don't see many people write an entire application in Go these days. What else? Let's take a yeah. Let's talk about Rust. So Rust, this is a special one because I'm starting to get really into Rust now. I'm getting really curious about that language as I see that it's actually getting adoption, and I'm seeing that more and more people are kind of at least trying it out. I have unfortunately no real way of telling you what it's most commonly associated with, but what I can tell you is that it is my guess that. The aim of, like, or rather, I know that Rust's aim is to be a much better version of C and C++, a system-level language sort of thing. And right now, Mozilla is using it for more and more parts of the Mozilla browser, for example. So you can kind of understand where they're going with this. But I have also said that I think that Rust is going to be very closely associated with WebAssembly if that ever becomes a thing. So that's just me guessing that in the future I'm pretty sure that Rust is going... I, I, I actually, I'm starting to already see it. I think that Rust is going to... I, if, it plays, it plays the, if everything plays out nicely for Rust, I think that it's going to be a pretty important language for the web platform. I do. I really do. That's why I'm getting so excited about it. What else do we have to talk about? Have I missed anyone? Well, of course I've missed tons of languages, but I can't really talk about Haskell or F Sharp or OCaml or Lisp or like there's so many languages, guys. I've just skimmed the surface of the languages. These are the languages that I've used myself firsthand. And some of them I've used in like full time in a professional capacity. And some of them I've just used a little bit in my free time. And like I've talked to people who use it and gone to a few conferences. But these are the things that I most commonly see. Yeah, I would say so. This is, as I said, a very rough list and it's highly subjective. And maybe if you, if you know, or, yeah, let's do this. If you know of other use cases for some languages, just put a comment on this video and then maybe share that with everybody else. Because I can imagine that there's quite a few people out there who kind of wonder like, all right, which language should I pick? What, what can I kind of expect to be doing if I pick a specific type of language? Because although we may think that every language can do absolutely everything, I think we can all agree that it's very common to see certain things be built in some languages and other, other things in other languages. Have a great day.